Summary of Mythology by Edith Hamilton Edith Hamilton's book Mythology is essentially its own massive study guide due to the fact that it provides an overview of the primary myths from Greek and Roman mythology as well as some brief explorations into Norse mythology. The book only has a loose sense of order when it comes to time. This is because the mythological world is so big and complicated that Hamilton often has to talk about characters and stories that were told much earlier or later. In her opening, she says that she is studying these stories because she thinks they were the beginnings of Western thought and can teach modern Americans something. Hamilton then introduces the major Greek gods, who live on Mount Olympus, Zeus, the chief and god of thunder and sky, Hera, his sister and jealous wife, his fierce, independent daughters Athena and Artemis, his sons cruel Ares and poetic, prophetic Apollo, his brothers, Poseidon the sea god and Hades the god of the dead, Hestia, his sister and the protector of the hearth, the clever messenger Hermes, the craftsman Hephaestus, and Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty. Demeter, the goddess of corn, and Dionysus, the god of wine, are two other important gods who live on earth. Some of the lesser gods and magical beings are Eros, all kinds of nymphs, and people who represent vague ideas like justice and memory. The Greek story of how the world was made starts with chaos, night, and death. Next comes love, which brings heaven and earth with it. After that come monsters and the titans, who are like gods. Cronus's children, the gods, led by Zeus, kill their father and take over the world. Then, they make people and other supernatural beings, which live on earth. Hades is where the dead go. As the gods, especially the horny Zeus, have babies with humans, heroes and sad love stories are born. Hamilton starts with the titan Prometheus, one of the first heroes, and then goes on to describe in detail great human heroes like Theseus, Hercules, Achilles, Odysseus, and Aeneas. She organizes the short bios around the Trojan War a fight from Greek mythology in which many of the best-known heroes fought and which Homer wrote about in his epics. Aeneas, the mythical ancestor of the Romans, is an example of a hero whose story explains how the Romans came to be. Other myths, like the ones about the stars and the beginnings of flowers, explain natural things, while others are just for fun. Most of the time, beautiful young people die sad deaths in the flower myths, and Hamilton sees these as poeticized versions of early stories about sacrificing people. Throughout the book, she follows the lines of primitive brutality, like cannibalism and human sacrifice, and the civilized ideas that gradually replace them. Later in the book, Hamilton talks about how the old Greek authors told complicated, sad tales. In these stories, Widely sad heroes like Oedipus and Orestes are used to question the power of fate and the ability of humans to have free will even when the gods tell them what will happen. They also look at times when Greek ideas of morals and justice clash, like when Orestes has to choose between getting revenge on his father and letting his mother go free. These tragedies are linked to families with more than one generation, where the sins of the parents are repeated or punished by the children, and where violence always leads to more violence. In the last part, Hamilton talks briefly about Norse myths, which she sees as another important impact on how people think today in the West. Norse myths are full of sad stories, but almost none of them have survived, and they don't have any great epic writers like Homer to tie them together and make them stronger. The Norse view of the world is much darker than that of the Greeks and Romans. All gods and humans will die in Ragnarok, the fight at the end of the world in which evil will win. Hamilton talks about some of the most famous Norse gods and heroes and explains how the Norse idea of heroism was more extreme than the Greeks. Because the Norse thought tragedy was inevitable, they valued a heroic death more than anything else. About the author Edith Hamilton was born in Dresden, Germany. Her father was a scholar, and he taught Hamilton Latin and Greek starting when she was seven years old. Hamilton got his degree from Bryn Mawr College and then went to Germany for a short time to study. He came back to the United States to become the head of the Bryn Mawr Girls School. Hamilton was known for a long time as the greatest woman classicist, but she didn't write a book until she was 62. Her first books, The Greek Way and the Roman Way, compared and contrasted life in ancient Greece and Rome with life today. 
However, mythology is the book for which Hamilton is best known. In 1957, Athens made Hamilton an honored citizen. She died when she was 95. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.